Hey, this is David the Shepherd School. What you're looking at is a two-cycle weed eater engine uh, that I have uh, pulled out of a weed eater and stripped down to basically just the block and the uh, pistons and the uh, flywheel here. And I've jury-rigged it up to make a steam engine. Right now I don't have a boiler, so I'm running off compressed air. And uh, I built up some air in my tank. Turn it on and I'll show you kind of what it does. Now it's kind of hit or miss right now. The higher the air pressure, the faster it goes. And uh, once I get a flywheel to it, I'll make me a steam uh, a boiler and it'll be able to run a lot better. Okay, so the boiler would be here. Then I've just got a quick disconnect, which for a boiler I'd have that plumbed in. I wouldn't have a quick disconnect. Then I've just got to get a uh, valve just to make it easy a little air hose come down from the air hose this is an inline um, oil reservoir because the the steam's corrosive and so you want to have a lot of oil in there this is a check valve this is just a reducer to a pipe nipple that just screws into the uh, the block and I'll take it all apart. All right, there's the hose. Oil reservoir. I've got a reducer in there. It's in pretty tight, so I'm not going to mess with that. This is the brains of the, uh, of the job here. And here's your block that's just where the spark plug went in so this check valve you've got a little this is actually a part of an ink pen I just cut off because I had to measure because the way the thing works you got the piston right two cycle all the way up and then the thing fills up with gas was down here comes all the way up which gives some compression when the spark plug ignites that gas it's an explosion and it pushes that piston down okay well if we put this push rod in here see how it moves oh when it's all the way up at the top it sticks out pretty far okay but as it pushes down it doesn't stick out so far okay so what we've got is a serious lack of tools but and this nipple just makes up the, the you know distance the length there so here's a check uh, a check valve right and inside here there's a little spring can you hear that so what happens is steam comes in here and it pushes that valve closed and there's a spring in there okay and since it's closed it's pushed all the way down and so your pistons here at the bottom okay well to start this thing you just give it a whirl and what you do is you push that thing up and as you push it up push rod comes up which opens this valve, it pushes it up. So a blast of steam comes in and it expands in this chamber. Okay, so you see so a little bit of steam comes in, but it expands a lot, and that pushes this down. Okay? Was it pushes it down, it closes it, and the, the leftover gas comes out the uh, the muffler, okay? And so there's there's nothing keeping it down. If there was no check valve, the air would just push it, and it would lock itself down. It would just lock, okay? But since the, you just get a burst with that check valve, as it comes down, inertia, this thing wants to keep going. It wants to spin. So inertia gets it coming up. It gets another blast, pushes it down, 
Inertia makes it keep spinning. That's why you have to have a flywheel. You've got to have some weight. Because so as that weight starts to spin, it's going to want to keep spinning. And as it wants to keep spinning, it keeps pushing that check rod up. Okay? So, it took me a while. You, there's a lot of websites, internet, YouTube videos for this, and they show this project, but they don't really tell where to get the check valves. That took me the longest to, to find. I think this is a three quarter inch brass check valve and if you go to the plumbing supply store I had to go to an industrial plumbing supply store to get this thing and I told them what I wanted it for and they were like you can't get a you know the, the pipe fittings are different well they probably are but um, I got this reducer that screws right into it okay and then I just got this little pipe nipple that fits that reducer okay you want it to be you don't want it too big because you don't want this thing to wobble but you want it big enough where air can get around it okay so and I just kinda it didn't quite cross thread it, it it's not the exact right thread but uh, when you twist it on pretty tight it fits it hadn't gouged it up so it's not too terribly bad but um it took me a minute, and that's why I'm using this piece of ink pen, because it's plastic. It's easy to measure. Uh, now that I got the measurements right, before I do this for real with actual steam, I think I'm going to get like a carriage bolt, uh, you know, the ones with the round heads, and uh, get it with uh, where, where the thread doesn't go all the way up, because I don't want thread in there. It'll wear it out and just cut the threads off. So I've got a basically a piece of rod, with a rounded end. If I can't find that, I'll probably just get a piece of bar stock, heat it up, and, and beat it round at the top, and then heat treat it. But getting this length, what I end up having to do, I had to um, stick the. Uh, I had to find a couple measurements. I had to find out how far it went in when it was at, at, at bottom. Okay, that's how far the piston is from the bottom. Then I had to figure out what it was at top dead center. Okay, so you know you got about it's about this far at top dead center. Well, that far at bottom. At top dead center, it's about that much. So you got about an inch, and then I had to figure out where it was with the spring you know with the valve shut and how far to go with the valve open okay and then what I did is I made sure that with it was at top dead center there was enough space to go from the top here all the way up to open that valve okay so I had to had to screw this thing in tight and measure that too. Okay, so it's about that many threads. So I've got that much plus the amount of the engine together. And I don't remember what these measurements were because this thing's been sitting around on my desk for eight months while I've been, you know, thinking about getting me a, a boiler. But basically, I just added the two measurements together and I got this and I cut a little longer and then I just, you know, put it all together, gave it a twist, see if it would run. If it was too long, it would, it would push it down to the bottom. Uh, it would keep the valve open and then it wouldn't run. If it, uh, uh, was enough where it wouldn't lock it open but it was still a little bit too long where it wouldn't let the valve fully shut it just kind of vibrated a little bit if it was too short it would only work one time you know or it wouldn't work at all so after messing up a couple pins I got this length and then I'll go measure that and I'm not going to tell you what that is because I don't know what your engine block is going to be and I don't know what your pipe nipple is going to be um, because I don't have any part numbers. You're just going to have to figure this out for yourself. Now, for a boiler, I plan on using a pressure cooker, but um, 
I got to get another pressure cooker. And they're kind of expensive, and I'm having a hard time finding any on Craigslist. You know, I don't want to try to weld up a boiler. So I'm going to use something with it's already got a safety valve or whatever. Um, the other thing is, with my flywheel, it's kind of an odd size. The shaft is. It's awful small. And I can find some um, bushings to make it a little smaller. But my problem is, my spline is um, it's not flat it's uh, you know triangular and so I'm having a hard time finding a pulley so I guess what I'm going to end up doing is uh, getting me another one with that same size shaft and then uh, casting a flywheel out of aluminum there's a guy named uh, Steve Chastain and I don't know if I pronounce his name right, but he's an actual engineer. He's got a book called, I believe, Inverters and Generators, and I'll put a link to it. But he talks about doing, um, you know, building your own engines and your own flywheels, and he's got some calculations because if your flywheel is too, is, isn't strong enough, the force of this thing spinning, the centrifugal force, causes the, or could cause the thing to shatter. Personally, I'm not an engineer, and that's why you shouldn't try to do anything I'm doing the way I'm doing it, because I'm just uh, uh, basically throwing stuff up against the wall and seeing what sticks. But anyway, this is a pretty simple little project. It didn't take me very long to get running, uh, but to get it running permanently where I can actually use it maybe to make a permanent magnet generator is what my idea is. Uh, build this thing up to a, uh, you know, build the flywheel with magnets in it, you know, and then turn it into a permanent magnet uh, permanent magnet generator and then using it to charge batteries okay because if I've got a pressure cooker for a boiler I could just put it on a wood stove or put it outside on a fire and uh, do my batteries it doesn't take any kind of infrastructure and it doesn't have to worry about EMP type pulse it's 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 pretty strong okay it's also pretty easy tech to uh, fix you can go down to a small engine place and get uh, we did our motors for next to nothing. A buddy of mine just gave me that motor because he didn't want to worry with throwing it away. So that's all there is to it. Pretty neat little project. And until next time, you can always catch us online at www.tngun.com.